important that we continue to develop the systems necessary for our soldiers to operate across a wide variety of missions that we'll ask them to do. We want soldiers who can think. We want squads that are mobile. We want squads that are networked. We want squads that are lethal. It's call us the tip of the spear because we're the ones out there in the fight. At the edge of the battle, there's gonna be a squad leader with a group of six to 10 men or women that are gonna be doing what the nation wants. And so we've gotta give them everything that they need in order to be successful, to overmatch and defeat any enemy that they face. I'm definitely proud of being in the squad that I am and I, in the platoon that I am. We have a lot of experienced guys who've, who've came from different places and done different things throughout their military career. The squad's critical because it's a decisive point on the battlefield. It's the it's where we encounter the enemy first and get involved in the close fight. The squad. It's the foundation of the decisive force. The current operating environment has forced us to operate at the decentralized and dismounted squad or tactical small unit level. When you look at the squad, it's really important. Uh, we've had great programs that have helped the individual soldier and we've got to sustain those. But now in this uh, new approach, we're looking at the measures of effectiveness on the formation of the squad itself. So it's leader development, training in the human dimension, how we can improve that to get to where the squad uh, can be victorious at the lowest level on the battlefield. The squad is networked with and relies on the support of other small units whose tasks vary according to their specialty. And regularly, specialists from those units are attached to squads to help empower squad capabilities to achieve mission success. For squads to be effective, they have to employ enablers that are available across the battlefield. An enabler is a person who is helping out the infantry, giving them whatever their specialty is, whether it's intelligence or medical. We had um, civil affairs guys with us that were out there to, to connect with the local population and, you know, kind of break down the hostility that's there that me and my squad can't do. We're working hard to get the squad better access to enablers and uh, opportunities to train effectively more with those enablers so they can be effective in the complex fight they face today and to, into the future. As an enabler, uh, you gotta be a part of a squad to make it work. Every time they went out, I could have had time off, but I didn't want it. I wanted to be out there with them every time. In an army built from the bottom up, the enabled squad is the foundation of the unit and thus the building block of all decisive action on and off the battlefield. I'm very excited about some of the things that we are developing that helps us to develop the individual and the squad in, in their ability to fight on the ground. We want to provide our squads uh, overmatch. Uh, we want to ensure that when our squad meets the enemy, it is not a fair fight. Uh, we have a, a significant advantage everywhere except at the lowest level. And that's where the enemy can blend in among the population, the enemy can use the terrain and, and try to uh, bleed us by a thousand cuts and not get after our higher echelons but fight us one squad at a time. We want an overmatch with the squad against any enemy that our squads may face around the world. And so we're gonna provide an emphasis on the squad and give them that capability that our platoons and companies and battalions and so on already have. of our modernization program for our squads, it's important that we, be, we develop more affordable programs, capabilities that we can deliver more quickly to our young men and women out there, and jump forward in our ability to develop technologies that give them the advantage, the decisive advantage, 
on the battlefield. I think the key thing as far as making sure that we're equipped and trained is being able to get things faster. I think speed is of the essence. Things are changing so quickly from not even year to year, but just month to month as far as how we fight the battles. So just being able to get things to the, to the people on the ground as quickly as possible, I think that would help out a lot. Uh, everything grows from the squad and the squad's ability to carry out its mission. If we forgot that before, it has been driven home in the last 10 years of war. Uh, because squads don't just make tactical decisions, they make strategic decisions. Uh, and young leaders at that level, young soldiers at that level, are, are really key to the Army's success. What we need to do now is to focus again on those things that develop us as leaders. Those taking care of soldiers, those understanding the larger picture, being culturally astute, being a critical and creative thinker, being grounded in the traditional role of the non-commissioned officer. We say this is what we want from a broadly skilled NCO, and our education system is reshaping and redesigning our program so that we provide that to the force. It's important for us to first ensure that our soldiers have what they need. They have the training, they have the development, they have the equipment, they have the tactics, techniques, and procedures to move forward. And the foundation of this is the squad. You put boots on the ground, it's decisive. And great squads equal great platoons, equal great companies, and so forth on up the line. So the squad is clearly the foundation of the decisive force. The squad of the future, the building block of the decisive force, a cohesive team with Army values and a warrior spirit, honed from lessons learned, modernized to sharpen the tip of the spear. Yeah.